When Lord of the Flies was published in 1954, the threat of an all-out nuclear war was very real. William Golding's book begins in the aftermath of such a war. A plane has crashed on a desert island. The survivors are all young boys. The boy with fair hair lowered himself down the last feet of rock and began to pick his way toward the lagoon. This is an island. At least I think it's an island. That's a reef out in the sea. Perhaps there aren't any grown-ups anywhere. The fat boy looks startled. Aren't there any grown-ups at all? I don't think so. The fair boy said this solemnly, but then the delight of a realised ambition overcame him. No grown-ups! As a boy, William Golding loved stories about desert islands, in particular Coral Island by R. M. Ballantyne. It's the story of three English boys who get shipwrecked. They make themselves a shelter and a boat without much difficulty, catch and cook food, and settle down to a life of bliss. Washing in the sea, sleeping on the ground, and all for nothing, cried Peterkin. My dear boys, we're set up for life. Hurrah! There was indeed no note of discord whatever in the symphony we played together on that sweet coral island. As an adult, Golding worked as a teacher in a boys' public school. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, sir. Right, sit down, please. Observing their behaviour made him realise that the Coral Island version of boys was far from real. I was tired of these islands with their paper cut out goodies and baddies and everything for the best. I thought, wouldn't it be a good idea if I wrote a story about boys on an island and let them behave the way they really would? So I sat down and wrote it. In Lord of the Flies, he puts 30 or so ordinary British boys, aged between 6 and 12, on an island to see what happens. It's an experiment. At the start, the older boys create order. The conch becomes a symbol of authority. It's blown to call them to meetings. Ralph is elected leader. A fire is to be lit so that any passing boat will see the smoke and rescue them. Jack is the head of a group of choir boys. He wants to be the chief, but has to settle for head of the pig hunters. Golding lifted the names of the main characters directly from Coral Island. He also borrowed the island location. Both books start as innocent adventures, the boys wide-eyed with excitement. But in all other ways, Golding's book presents a darker vision of paradise. It was the Second World War that shook Golding's faith in human nature when he saw what men, including himself, could do to each other. He'd been an officer in the Navy and had ordered the destruction of German ships and submarines. He was involved in the shelling of German troops during the D-Day landings. On one occasion, he shelled a town from far out at sea. But when he went ashore, he was horrified to see what he'd done. As the Allies moved east, they uncovered terrible evidence of man's capacity for evil.
The Nazis had herded together all the scapegoats of their society, Jews, gypsies, homosexuals, the disabled, and exterminated them. Nazi doctors conducted inhuman experiments on small children. Terrible things done, not by savages, but by educated people from the same civilization that produced Mozart and Bach. Before the war, my generation had a naive belief in the perfectibility of man. After it, we saw what man could do to man. It was like lamenting the lost childhood of the world. The theme of Lord of the Flies is grief. Sheer grief. 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 In Britain, the end of the war was celebrated. The nightmare was over. Evil had been defeated and we could start all over again. The problem was that the British saw the Nazis as wholly evil and they themselves as wholly good. Golding thought this attitude was smug. It's just like Coral Island where the cannibals and pirates commit the atrocities and the British boys are squeaky clean. One of the faults of the British is to believe that evil is somewhere else an inherent in another nation. Jack held out his hands with a conch. We've got to have rules and obey them. After all, we're not savages. We're English, and the English are best at everything. My book was to say, I know why the thing rose in Germany. I know it can happen in any country. It could happen in Britain. The boys try to construct a civilization on the island, but it breaks down in blood and terror because the boys are suffering from the terrible disease of being human. At the heart of the problem is fear. Fear of the unknown takes hold in the form of an imaginary beast that stalks them at night. The hunters try to placate the beast with a gift, the severed head of a pig. Jack held up the head and jammed the soft throat down on the pointed end of the stick. The head is for the beast, it's a gift. All at once they were running away, as fast as they could, towards the open beach. The gift is useless. There is no beast in the forest. It's inside us. But only one boy, Simon, knows the truth. The Lord of the Flies spoke in the voice of a schoolmaster. Fancy thinking the beast was something you could hunt and kill, said the head. I'm part of you. I'm the reason why it's no go. Why things are the way they are. The Lord of the Flies hung on the stick and grinned. The title, Lord of the Flies, was taken from the Bible. It's the Hebrew word for the devil. The Elzebub. By believing in a devil, a beast, people are able to transfer all that is bad in them onto something or someone else. The Nazis heaped it on the Jews. For the boys, it's Simon. 